it is the beginning of summer so I want to show you guys about a really cool product uh, called Star Blend. It's been around for a while so you probably already know about it. But as you move into summer you probably want to get a few of these to have in your kit so that it's not so... Um, it's a little bit easier to use when you're face painting because it's dry, it goes on dry, so it's good during the summer so you don't have to use as much paint, as much of that cold feeling. I have Jaden in the studio, say hi. He is growing up so cute. Oh my god. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to show you guys a line that I do. So I like to have my white star blend on me at all times because it can be used as a base for several designs. Uh, for the eyes for your Spider-Man, it can be used uh, just for a multitude of things. That's why white, if anything else, is a good color to have. You're not going to paint with it. You are going to use it with something called a smoothie blender. A smoothie blender is a dry applicator. It kind of feels really soft, so when you rub it across the surface of your star blend, um, it picks up and holds the powder nicely and it distributes it nicely so these are good to have this is a good product to have too so let's get started so we're gonna start off by using our star blend and our smoothie blender and putting down the white areas first and then I'm gonna kabuki everything else in but I'll show you how fast and easy this is so I'm gonna take my smoothie blender I rub it kind of in a circular motion on the top of the powder to pick it up and now I retrieved it kind of this kind of looks like a bigger version of an eyeshadow uh, brush so all you have to do I like to just blow off the extra so that that extra powder doesn't really get on their skin so then I'm just going to have him close his eyes and then I'm just going to go over the eye just like that, fill it in and it's nice and soft and easy because it's a powder and it's not that wet feeling. And then I go underneath the eye as well because for my, for my tiger I like to keep it just over the eye but for my lion I like to exaggerate the eyes a little bit which is why I do, um, I go underneath the eye as well. So now that I have the white on his eyes, I also want to create the muzzle area. So what I'm going to do is just kind of keep it nice and round as well against the mouth because you want it to be, that's where the hair is going to be, the majority of the hair. But you see how fast and easy this goes on and you can cover quite a lot of area really quickly. And although it's not as opaque as your say wolf white it's a really good base and it's nice and soft and it goes on the skin without that really wet feeling so once you have your base on and once you have the white now I'm gonna take my kabuki brush which is one of my favorite products this one is made by Lima and I love 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 this one I don't get a lot of shedding out of it and it's really a great great brush so all I'm going to do is take the color that I want to use uh, for a base I'm going to be mixing this um, it's like a copper bronze and a gold so all you have to do is just spritz them and then I'm going to take my kabuki and I'm just going to rub it over each of them to pick up the color you don't want to soak your kabuki because then it gets too wet and that's a weird feeling because it already is going to feel a little bit fun on their face so now all I'm going to do is fill in um, around his face so I'm just going to move this and then gently I'm just going to add the color right over it. So the Kabuki is really nice because it goes smoothly over the skin. It adds a really kind of even, uh, nice, soft uh, coverage. Without cleaning it, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of orange um, on my Kabuki as well so that it blends with the color that was already on there. And I'm just going to bring that orange just across the head and right onto the cheeks just to add a little bit more of a punch of color. Also I tapped it in a little bit of brown and I'll just kind of dust that in there too. Just so that I have this contrast maybe on the tip of the nose. So then now I have this beautifully blended base coat um, of those colors and I, it was fast, it was simple, especially using the kabuki my fingers aren't all dirty which is always nice. Now I'm just going to pick up my black and I'm going to do the outlining and then that should be you know the the finishing stages of it so I'm just picking up my black this is a number four round brush I load it pretty well so I like to start in the middle of the design um, and I'll start with the nose so you want it to be almost like a triangle so I draw it out and you want it to cover nostril to nostril so I just go up give it that little bit of a pointy edge on both sides and, and then I fill 
it in. So then once I have the nose on, then I follow that down to the top lip. So making a very, very straight line, I come down and I extend as I get towards the bottom. And then I try to cover the top lip immediately because your goal is to make it almost like an illusion. You want to make that top lip disappear. So then from there, I like to start at the corner of the lip and I like to follow this shape out. So I'm going to start out very straight here and I come up and I get thinner as I go to the top. And I like to start here for a couple of reasons. One, because if the child moves, then I, then I don't have that wiggly motion from going down to up, but it also helps me extend the mouth a little bit more. Now from this point right here, I also like to create a smaller bottom lip that small bottom lip. So now you really can't see those areas. So from the corner here, I'm just going to create some hair coming down to kind of outline that beard. And then I'm gonna start working my way up. So as you see, these eyes are exaggerated here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cover his lid. So close your eyes for me. And making sure that your brush isn't too, too wet, I'm just going to actually cover his lid and create that cat eye coming up, and then you can fill it in. If you wanna switch over to more of a chisel brush to fill that in, go ahead too. So I just took my chisel brush, and it was dry, but my paint was still relatively wet. Then all I did was just fill it in so that I get a softer blend right inside of there. So what I do on one side, you wanna do on the other side. So now that I have the eyes, you wanna exaggerate them. So all I'm going to do is just start in the corner of the eye right here, and follow this line down a little bit. Just like that, so I extended them. And then from the corners of the eyes here, now all I'm going to do is taking my black and making sure that it's a little watered down, I'm going to trace the outline of this line as well. So I'm going to just come up and come down just like that around the eye so that I'm making it a bigger, bolder eye. Again, you want your eyes to be exaggerated for any cat. So then just, I'm going to take this same chisel brush and kind of wash out the edges so that they're not as strong along my eyes right inside of here. So this is that new Silly Firm chisel. Again, it's not, it has no paint on it. I just am using it to kind of drag, drag blend. Um, the, the black one. And I'll do the same thing like along the edges of his muzzle right inside of there so that you get that nice softer blend. All right, so now all I'm going to do is load up my chisel brush with a little bit of brown and then I'm going to just start making some, bringing this hair down towards the middle just like that, kind of just bringing it in. And then the same thing goes for the hair and it's going to travel in this upward motion and it's all heading into this point right here, your focal point. Making sure that all of my hair flows into those areas, even from the top. In there. So using a relatively drier brush, I start inside of the muzzle right here and very straight, soft lines. I create some of those whiskers right inside of there. And you can extend those out if you choose to, to make it a little bit more of a, of a menacing mouth. And if you really wanted to, you can just come off of here and create some teeth. Taking my wisp brush. This has these little wispies on the end, kind of like this fanned out hair. And all I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of black so that I can dust the edges um, and just kind of fan them out for the hair. So just gently making sure that all the hair again is heading into the center and keeping it, uh, keeping it. And then again, just kind of pulling it into here because you want all the hair to kind of be flowing into the middle of this design as well. So lastly, I just want to take some of this gold glitter and I'm going to emphasize right in the middle of his nose, right inside of there, because I want that to stand out. And then right along his cheekbones. 
just so that I can kind of make those areas stand out without them being totally um, overwhelmed by the, the glitter. Especially because he's a boy and he was looking at me like, what, you're gonna give me glitter, right? <laughs> now nah, he's so good. So thank you guys for joining me for another tutorial on my little lion cat. Say bye everybody. And happy summer. I hope you guys are having a great, phenomenal summer. Don't forget to give me feedback and subscribe to my channel. If you like what you see here, there's so much more on Fava TV. So log on to favatv.com and check us out. There's over 90 hours of classes. So I hope you enjoy this design today. I hope you have a great summer. Bye for now.